Whenever there's a conversation about hurricanes, Jamaicans always mention Gilberts, even those who weren't there. I mean, the trauma and damage of Gilbert must have been so bad that it was passed on from generation to generation. Actually, Jamaica has a history of hurricanes, even before hurricanes were being named, and that we'll get into shortly. But first, let's talk about Gilbert. What happened in 1988? And why was it so bad that to this day, Jamaicans still shudder whenever they speak about Gilbert? Let's begin. On September 12, 1988, Jamaica faced the wrath of Hurricane Gilbert, one of the most devastating storms in its history. Gilbert, a monstrous Category 5 hurricane, swept across the island with winds reaching up to 185 mph. The storm brought widespread destruction, flattening homes, uprooting trees, and crippling infrastructure. It left a trail of devastation that Jamaica had not seen since Hurricane Charlie in 1951. Gilbert was not just a storm. It was a catastrophic event that tested the resilience and spirit of the Jamaican people. Now, Hurricane Gilbert began as an unassuming tropical wave off the coast of Africa on September 3rd, 1988. By September 8th, it had developed into a tropical depression east of Barbados. Rapid intensification followed and Gilbert became a tropical storm the next day. As it moved west-northwestward into the Caribbean Sea, it continued to gain strength, achieving hurricane status by September 10th. Just two days later, Gilbert made landfall in Jamaica as a Category 3 hurricane with winds of 125 mph. However, the storm did not stop there. After ravaging Jamaica, Gilbert rapidly intensified to a Category 5 hurricane with peak sustained winds of 185 mph and a barometric pressure of 888 MB, making it the most intense Atlantic hurricane on record at the time, a title it held until Hurricane Wilma in 2005. Gilbert's destructive path continued as it struck Mexico and later made landfall in mainland Mexico. Now, when Gilbert hit Jamaica, its impact was swift and brutal. The hurricane's 15-mile-wide eye passed directly over the island, subjecting it to hours of relentless winds and rains. Prime Minister Edward Siaga at the time described the hardest hit areas as looking like Hiroshima after the atom bomb. The statistics are staggering. 45 lives were lost and an estimated 700 million in damages were incurred. The storm destroyed or damaged more than 100,000 houses, leaving 500,000 people homeless. The agricultural sector suffered immensely, with the banana industry alone losing $400 million in export earnings. Coffee, cocoa, sugar, and livestock sectors also faced devastating loss. In the capital city of Kingston, power lines were down, trees uprooted, and buildings flattened. The Norman Manley International Airport suffered severe damage, grounding flights, and isolating the island further. Flooding caused by Gilbert's 32 inches of rainfall compounded the destruction, leading to landslides and the washing away of roads and bridges. Now for those who experienced Gilbert, are you able to recall what it was like at that time? Tell us in the comments. We would love to learn from you. Beyond the physical devastation, Hurricane Gilbert inflicted significant emotional and psychological trauma on the Jamaican people. Stories from survivors paint a vivid picture of the chaos and fear that gripped the island. Winston Brown, a new mother, had to navigate roads that were down and beaten with her newborn as the storm approached. 
seeking refuge with neighbors when her own home was inaccessible. Pastor Anne-Marie recounting the surreal experience of venturing outside during the hurricane, witnessing roofs being torn off and branches flying through the air. The aftermath was equally harrowing. Many areas were without electricity for months and essential services like water and telecommunications were disrupted. The lack of power and clean water escalated the already dire situation leading to food shortages and a public health crisis. The poultry industry was decimated and with it went a significant source of food and income for many Jamaicans. In the wake of Hurricane Gilbert, Jamaica faced the task of rebuilding. Prime Minister Siaga at the time declared a state of emergency and appeal for international aid. The response was overwhelming. Countries like the US, Canada, Britain, and Cuba, among others, provided financial assistance, technical expertise, and supplies. Military aircraft and ships transported essential goods and evacuated those in dire need. The Jamaican government, alongside international organizations, mobilized resources to restore public services, repair infrastructure, and support the agricultural sector. Volunteers, police, and the army worked tirelessly to distribute food, water, and other necessities. Despite the scale of the disaster, the Jamaican spirit of community and resilience shone through. Hurricane Gilbert was a wake-up call for Jamaica and the wider Caribbean region. The storm underscored the importance of accurate weather forecasting, effective disaster planning, and community preparedness. In response, Jamaica overhauled its disaster management framework, establishing the Office of Disaster Preparedness and Emergency Management, ODPEM, in 1993. The ODPEM implemented the National Zonal Program, enhancing local capacity to manage disasters and ensuring that communities could sustain themselves for at least 72 hours post-disaster. Public education campaigns were intensified to raise awareness about hurricane preparedness. The National Disaster Plan was revamped and coordination between local, national and international stakeholders were strengthened. These measures have since improved Jamaica's resilience to hurricanes and other natural disasters. Now, I also read that looting was really high during this time. According to one report, food stores and supermarkets were looted. Over 51.2 million worth of goods were stolen following Gilbert. So I think that pretty much covers Gilbert. I'm sure we're missing some stuff. So for those who can fill in the blanks, please do. Now we're going to move on to the list of hurricanes that, you know, hit Jamaica from the 1700s. According to the National Library of Jamaica. Now, some of these don't have any names because it was before hurricanes were being named. Now, I'm seeing here the earliest reference to a hurricane in Jamaica dates back to 1559 when a hurricane caused severe damage to the island's infrastructure. Highlighted below are some hurricanes or tropical storms that have affected Jamaica since the 18th century. In 1722, August 28, the Jamaica report of 1915 reported that the entire island was damaged due to hurricane of 1722. The eye of the storm passed over Port Royal, causing serious damage, and the water in Port Royal rose 16 feet above its usual level. Most of the buildings in Kingston were either damaged or completely destroyed. About 5% of the town was in ruins and plantations all over the island were severely destroyed. Of the 50 vessels that were in the port, only 4 military personnel within those vessels were spared. Approximately 
400 lives were lost. We might not get through the whole list, but we're going to do as many as we can. Now, another one happened on 1726, October 22 in 1726. Now, according to the report, hurricane affected the east end of the island. Historian Edward Long stated that several houses in Kingston, Spanish Town, and Portland had been blown down. Fifty vessels had either sunk or been wrecked. Another one happened October 20, 1744, described in Long as a great hurricane which damaged the whole island. 104 ships wrecked in harbor. A new fort at Ma uh, Mosquito Point, no, Fort Augusta, was entirely, entirely destroyed. All wharves of Port Royal, Kingston, Passage Fort, and Whole Harbor were destroyed. And most of the goods at these wharves were swept away. By flood rains. After the passing of the hurricane, disease broke out, resulting in the la loss of more lives. Now there's another that happened on October 3rd, 1780. Southern Jamaica was affected. High waves destroyed houses along the south coast. William Beckford, 1790, reported that during this hurricane, the entire island was affected. But the town of Savannah Lamar in Westmoreland was destroyed and southwestern Jamaica was hardest hit. An earthquake followed the passing of this hurricane. Another happened on October 20, 1786. There was a storm followed by a great scarcity of food. Due to the succession of hurricanes and fires, a law was passed entitled An Act for the Further Raising and Establishing the Credit of this Island and for Preventing Vector Suits at Law, 1788. Now, on October 12 to 14, 1812, the Jamaica Physical Journal states that the entire island was affected by a large cyclone. In Kingston and Savannah Lamar, many houses and fences were blown down. Boats and other vessels were either destroyed or driven ashore. The hurricane of 1812 was accompanied by a severe earthquake. Wow, we definitely don't want that. On August 1st, 1813, shipping ports in Kingston were greatly affected by a storm. Buildings were also damaged in Kingston. On August 28, 1813, Savannah Lamar was badly affected. Storm resulted in the wreckage of several vessels in Savannah Lamar. I say, once the Savannah Lamar is so bad because you're so used to that. But excuse me, lips. <laughs> All right, so let's continue. On October 18 to 19, 1815, according to the Jamaica Physical Journal and the weather report number 352, the eastern section of the island was affected. Heavy rains in eastern Jamaica led to much flooding. There was also great destruction of houses in St. George and St. David. On September 1, 1874, Kingston, St. Andrew, and St. St. Anne and St. Mary were worse hit. The Daily Gleaner and Daily News reported November 1874 that many houses, churches, and other buildings sustained real damage. Iron bridges became twisted under the pressure of heavy winds and whole villages with mud cottages were washed away. Yam, sugarcane, planting vegetations were destroyed throughout the island. More than 24 vessels had either sunk, been grounded, or suffered serious damage. Five persons were killed. Damage estimated at about £75,000. On August 18, 1830, 1880, my apologies, this one was described as a great hurricane in the Jamaican Weather Report 449. Two cyclones were said to have damaged the eastern side of the island. Due to flooding, five persons drowned and 25 perished among falling houses. There was damage to crops, wharves, and shipping areas in Kingston. 
And I think the last one they noted for that century happened on June 27, 1886 and August 19 to 20, same year it seems. The first storm affected eastern Jamaica, Jamaica. The second hurricane to pass on the 19 and 20 was a direct hit to Jamaica and the center passed from eastern Jamaica to Montego Bay. Let us know if you're still following. Thumbs up, comment, share, like. We're going to continue into the 20th century. On August 11, 1903, cyclone damaged Northside and other areas of the island. There were 65 reported deaths and damages assessed at £125,000. £50,000 spent in relief loans. Trinidad contributed 1000 Another on June 13, 1904. Storm resulted in heavy rains over the western end of the island. Montego Bay Bridge was destroyed due to flooding and winds. Then let's move on to 1912 on November 10 to 18. The Jamaica weather report for the month of November 1912 number 411 pages 1 to 3 state that due to a cyclone, heavy rains fell over the northeastern part of the island in St. Thomas, Portland, St. Andrew and St. Mary on the 10th, 11th, 12th of November 1912. On the 14th of November, a cablegram was received stating that there was a second depression located southwest of Kingston. By the 18th of November, both cyclones had produced a hurricane and resulted in a furious hurricane which created severe weather conditions in Mobe and Kemshot in St. James. Northwest side of the island was worse affected and there was severe flooding. A total of 100 persons died, with 42 of that number being from Montego Bay. There was a tidal wave in Savannah Lamar that did great damage. Lucy and Green Island were considerably damaged. No estimate of total damage is found, but separate estimates for items such as houses, schools can be found in the minutes of the Honorable Legislative Council, 17 December 1912. All right, so on August 12 to 13, 1915, there was a report on the hurricane of August 12 and 13, 1915, number 446, page 2 to 4, stated that the center of the hurricane passed over Buff Bay in St. Mary. In Port Maria, between 250 and 300 persons were rendered homeless. The town hall and courthouse had to be restored to for shelter. Much damage was done to wharves in St. Mary. Considerable damage was done to Ar Arakabesa and Ocherius and the wharves and the wharves houses were damaged in St. Anne's Bay and Falmouth. Houses on the sea coast were either destroyed or lifted up and carried away. The most severe damage with regards to roads was to those along the sea coast. About 200 yards of the railway track outside of Buff Bay was completely destroyed. All towns on the northern coast were destroyed. Total of 11 deaths. 80% to 90% of banana crops were lost. And the total spent on repair of damages was £57,692. Now I think I'm going to just show you the, the rest of these. There are others that happen all the way up to, well, you have 1915, 1932, 16, 17, 1933, 1944, 1950, 50, yeah, there are a lot. So we're just going to show you the visuals for these. So that's it for now. Um, there are others that happen after Gilbert's. Um, I'm just going to mention a few of them. We have the Hurricane Michelle in 2001. 2004 saw our Hurricane Charlie and also Hurricane Ivan. We also had 2005 Hurricanes Dennis and Emily. 2005 again Hurricane Wilma. 2007 Hurricane Dean. Then in 2008 Tropical Storm Nicole. Another Tropical Storm in 2008 Gustav. Then 2012 October, we had Hurricane Sandy. 
So that's it for now. Um, based on the hurricanes, the history. Not total, not complete. But we gave you as much information as we could. We hope you enjoyed this one. And also feel free to do further research. Everybody stay safe through this time. And you have a blessed one. Take care of yourself and each other. And we'll talk pretty soon.